two, but there's another topic in unit two, which I hope to cover today, which is called constructors. If I was going to list the three most confusing topics in the course, and the three most confusing topics on the AP exam, constructors would be one of the three. This recursion, by the way, is a lot more academically challenging than any of the other topics we'll cover in the course. This is unit 10, and even though it only takes about 15 minutes to explain it to you, it's by far the most challenging unit. We'll worry about that later, though. Right now, we want to focus our attention on constructors. And we already did a little bit of work on constructors when we talked about the dog class. All right, so we're going to create a brand new project today. And we're going to call this the building project because we're going to model a building. So there's the building project. And in the building project, I'm going to create two classes. The first one is called building. And we're eventually going to create another class. Actually, let's just do it right now called apartment building. And what we're going to do here is we're going to set up an inheritance relationship. So first, let's open up the building class. And we're going to have an extremely simple class. We're going to simply put in here private string name. That will be the name of our building. The methods are typically public. So we're going to say public string get name. And what this one does is simply returns the name variable. The other one is going to be a set name, public void set name. Notice that whereas the, the get name method returns a string variable, sorry, a string answer, the set name method doesn't return anything. And the way we indicate that in Java is with this void. But it does need information here to do its work. And we're going to say, we're going to take the new name that's given to us in the parameter list and save that in the name variable that's permanent like that. We also want to be able to, we also want to have the building class be able to print itself. So we're going to need a two string. So let's put that in. And this will help the print statement know how to print a building. Initially, we're just going to leave it at that. And now I'm going to come over here to my main window, and I'm going to create a test code class. So I'll call this building tester. And this will house my main method for testing purposes. And in here, we want to create a building set its name and then print it. So I need help now in figuring out how to create a building. Very good, sir. Building B equals new building like that. And now I want to set the name of the building. Mr. Diego, can you see if I've done anything wrong here, sir? OK, so this is a string that I have to give it. So I need to put quotes in here. And now I can print the building information by going like this. Notice that I can throw the entire building into the print statement because I wrote this to string, which works with the print statement and tells it what to print. So let's compile and run this puppy. And you can see here that I have successfully created and printed a building. Now I want to ask you some questions. Over here is a pointer to a building or a building variable. Over here, you can see that I've got the name of the class building and I've got these parentheses. Do you remember during the first week of school, I said that whenever you see parentheses, it always implies that this thing is a particular thing in Java? What did I say the parentheses indicate? Who remembers? Ms. Nuha? a verb, an action word. In this case, what's happening is I'm calling something called a constructor to build a building. And my question is, did we write such a constructor here? Do you see a method or anything that looks like a method that's called building? 
Miss Ishita, do you see such a thing? It, it, we did not. And so the first thing I want to tell you about constructors is that if you don't create one, the compiler will put one in for you. So here is the code that the compiler is sneaking in here behind your back, something like this. So because I did not write the constructor, this is what was written for me. Now I'm going to turn this constructor off for a second so that I can instead use the one that was automatically supplied by the compiler. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn off this code right here. And I want you to see that if I call the constructor and then don't tell the building its name and then try to print the building, look what happens now. You can see that the constructor has already run and it has set the name of the building to be null. Null is a special value in Java. Null basically means you haven't set the variable value. And if you try to print null, the word that prints is simply null. If you try to do some math with null, then you're going to get an error. But if you just simply try to print it, it'll print fine. So the first thing that we've learned today is that when you create a class, if you do not supply a constructor, the compiler will supply a constructor for you, which is kind of nice. But now we're going to go over here and we're going to write our own constructor. And what we're going to do here is we're going to, instead of having the name set to a null, I'm going to set the name to unknown like that. Notice that I have now supplied my own constructor for building. The compiler sees that you've supplied your own constructor for building. So it takes away the one that it had given you before. It says, oh, they're going to write their own constructors, so I don't have to write one for them. So now that I've written a constructor, the compiler takes away its constructor. So now if I run this test code, the constructor that's going to run is the one that I wrote, which is this one. So now you'll notice that if I was to compile and run this code, you can see that the name of the building has been changed from null to unknown because that's what I set it to over here in the constructor. Now, there's another way to write a constructor, which is that we can actually pass arguments or parameters to the constructor. Here, I am supplying the name of the building when the building is first created. And it's taking that name that I've supplied it and saving it in its permanent name variable. Let's try out this constructor now by creating another building. You'll see that this constructor will run. This is the fancy constructor that takes information. And I'm going to run it now and show you the difference. So now you can see this first building B. When I ran that, it set the it, it ran the first constructor and set the building to unknown. And then when I ran this other constructor here, which is the fancy constructor, it took the information that I gave it and used that to set the name of the building. And my question to you is, I've got two constructors here and I've got two constructor calls. How does it know which constructor to call for each call? Like over here, how did it know to call the first constructor and not the second one? Mr. Owen, can you tell me, sir, look over here. What was the clue that the compiler had that when I call this constructor, I want to call this constructor and not this constructor? Because there's nothing in the parentheses. So when the compiler runs, it matches something known as a signature, a method signature. Now, I should tell you, by the way, in Java, constructors are technically not even called methods because they don't have a return value. But a lot of times, most Java teachers kind of refer to them as specialized methods. But in any case, the, the, the signature of this method is building with no arguments. 
and it matches the signature at compile time. It says, oh yeah, I have one of those, building with no arguments. Here, the signature is building with a string. And here you can see it says, oh yeah, I got one of those, building with a string. If you try to call a different constructor, one that doesn't exist like this, this is building with an integer. Do we have a constructor building with an integer? No. So here you can see it's going to say, hey, I don't have a constructor that matches that. Now I'm going to show you something a little bit weird. This is going to be a little hard to explain, but let me try. I'm going to turn off this constructor so that I only have this one. Notice that I only have the string constructor now. I want you to notice what happens over here when I go to compile this test code. And it says, hey, you don't have a constructor that takes no arguments. But didn't I tell you earlier that the compiler gives you the one with no arguments if you don't write it? But look, it seems to have taken it away. And my question is, what do you think was the reason that the compiler took away the constructor with no arguments that it was writing for you before? Discuss with your partner why you think it might have taken it away suddenly. That's right. So because I supplied it a constructor here, it says, oh, this person wants to write their own constructors. So I'm not going to provide any default constructors. So notice now that if I don't give it any constructors, right? Let me turn off both constructors here. If I don't give it any constructors, this one will not work, obviously. But this one will now compile because the compiler will supply the zero argument constructor. But as soon as I supply a constructor myself, it takes away the zero argument constructor. It says, oh, you want to write your own constructors? Then I won't give you any. And now, if I have only this one constructor, the only way to create a building is to tell it its name when it's born. This other way of creating it like this will not compile anymore. If you want to have both ways working, you have to supply both constructors. So you can see here, now I've got both constructors. Now, you can create the building both ways. Next thing I want to show you. So here we were discussing constructors. And we have two constructors here, one with no arguments. So this is called the zero argument constructor. If you don't write this one and don't have any other constructors, the compiler will provide this one for you. This is called the full featured constructor. And it's called that because all the variables are defined here as a parameter list. This particular class only happens to have one variable. But if we had more variables here, we could put them all here. And now I'm going to show you another trick with constructors where instead of having two constructors all written out like this, I can actually have this constructor call this constructor. And the way I do that is with a keyword called this. Now, this is a little tricky. So let me just show you what's going on here. If you call the building constructor with zero arguments, what it does is it transfers control from here to over here. This constructor is now calling this constructor. The advantage of this approach is that if I have to write a ton of code over here, I don't want to repeat it over here. I can write the code once in the full featured constructor and have any other constructors that exist. I can create as many constructors as I want, by the way. I can have as many uh, uh, constructors as I want, and they can all call the full featured one, and I could put the bulk of the code in there. So now you can see this will still work. Let me show you. And both buildings will still get created as before. Uh, this one is being called initially with no name. Let me just turn off the name setting so you can see the difference. You can see that the first one is being called 
with no name, and the second one is being called with the full name. So this is how we can transfer control from one constructor to another. There's one really weird byproduct of this that I need to warn you about. Look over here. Looks like fairly innocuous code, right? Now look what happens when I go to compile it. It tells you that that's not allowed. And if you look over here, it tells you why. When you transfer control from one constructor to another, the control transfer has to be the very first line of code in the constructor call. In other words, I can put other code down here if I want, and that is perfectly okay. See, that's perfectly okay. But when I use the this keyword to transfer control from one constructor to another, I can't have any code that goes before before the the the, the, the transfer. Okay. Now I I can't even I can't even do this. Look, I can't even do that. So this has to be the first line of code in the call to transfer the control. So that's a little bit about having constructors in a class. The other thing I want to show you today is what happens when you have a class that inherits from another class. What do the constructors look like there? So to show you that, I'm going to come over here and create this new class called apartment building. And as you've probably guessed, apartment building is going to inherit from building. In order to inherit for one class to inherit from another, what are the key words that I use in this class for inheritance? Mr. Burnett, sir, uh, I'm gonna clean out this boilerplate code over here, and I need to put some words over here, sir, so that apartment building class knows that it inherits from building class. Do you remember what words we use here? No, sir, not inherit. It's a different set of keywords. Mr. Kevin, it's called extends. And Kevin, what do I put after that? This is called the base class. This is the derived class. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add another variable to the apartment building class, which is going to be the monthly rent. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to reuse the two string from the parent class. So I'm going to say super dot two string. I'm going to put return here. And then I'm going to add in the rent information. So the, when you print an apartment building, it'll print everything that the regular building prints, plus it'll print the rent information also. So I'm reusing the code from the parent class here, and I'm adding in all the additional information here. So let's do this. Let's go back to the tester now, and let's create an apartment building. In order to create an apartment building, Mr. Mitty, sir, can you help me create an apartment building? Now, question, am I able to set the name for the apartment building? Look here. I didn't write a set name method. Can I still use the set name method, Mr. Brian? Yeah. Yes, that is right. I can. Why, sir? It inherited the 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 ability to set the name. So, Brian, can you tell me how to set the name of the apartment building? Can I tell the apartment building how much rent it is, Mr. Diego? How do I tell the apartment building how much the rent's going to be? We'll make it 500 a month. And then we'll print the apartment building information. Like that. Let's run this now. We have three buildings. We have this building that has no name. We have this other one that's the Chrysler building. And now we created an apartment building. Let's compile and run it. And you can see here that the two string for the apartment building is a little bit fancier than the two string for the regular building. Now let's look over here and ask ourselves some questions about constructors. Did I write a constructor for apartment building? 
Did I write one? Do you see a constructor here for apartment building? Mr. Burnett, did I write one, sir? No, I did not. Really, really important. The most important thing I'm going to tell you today, listen to me, constructors are not inherited. They are not inherited. The apartment building class does not inherit the constructors from the building class. What happens instead is the compiler provides you a, a, a constructor if you do not write one yourself. In this case, you can see that you did not write an apartment building constructor. So here is what the compiler sneaks into the code for you behind your back. You can't even see it. It goes public apartment building. Notice that this is the zero argument or default constructor. Then it puts in this weird word here, which we'll talk about in a second. And then it also sets the rent. Can anyone guess what it's going to set the rent to if you don't tell it? Can't use null. This is a primitive. Kevin, it sets it to zero. So if you don't write the constructor, it provides this constructor for you. And my next question is, what do you think this means? It's calling something. What's it calling? Anybody want to take a guess what it's calling? Mr. Diego, sounds like you want to take a guess. What do you think? That's right. It's calling the building constructor. In order to create an apartment building, the Java virtual machine has to first create a regular building, and then it takes that regular building and it adds in all the other stuff that's specific to the apartment building. The apartment building is like a superset of features of a regular building. It starts by building a regular building, and then it adds in a bunch of stuff to make an apartment building. And so here, you can see that it calls the zero argument constructor. Now, let's say that I create another constructor. And let's say that I pass it the name of the building. Like this. And so now I'm going to call this constructor the full featured constructor. And what's happening here is I'm going to first call the building constructor, but I need to give it some information here. And then I can also set my rent variable to my new rent variable here. And now question is, what do I put in the parentheses here when I call the building constructor? The building constructor has some information now. Uh, that is useful to me that I can pass in the constructor. What can I pass here? Mr. Kevin, I can pass the new name now like this. So no, look what's happening. I'm calling the apartment building constructor. I'm giving it the name and the rent. Well, the name isn't stored here. It's stored in the base class building. But here I call the building constructor that takes the, the name information so here I'm calling this constructor right here. And then I'm also setting up the variables that are local. Now you'll notice that if I do this, and if I, in the tester class, change this now, change this so that I pass all the information right in here. So I'm going to go like that. And now I can compile and run this. And you can see it still works perfectly. One last thing, and we'll call it a day. Look what happens when I move this over here like this. You would think it would be innocuous, but now it doesn't compile. Can anyone guess why? Mr. Gabe, what's your guess as to why it won't compile, sir? Super, when you call it from inside a constructor, has to be the first line in the constructor. 
just like the this keyword has to be the first line, super also has to be the first line. So when you call one constructor from another, the this keyword and the super keyword have to go first.